So much is changing in lymphoma treatment at the moment. Um, and I guess what I would focus on is diffuse large B cell lymphoma and also follicular lymphoma. So in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, what we're eagerly awaiting is whether we'll be able to use CAR T cells in the second line treatment uh, space. At the moment, they're only available for third line. That's particularly frustrating for the patients who we don't want to autograft. So in other words, they fail their R-CHOP. Um, we want to give them something potentially curative, and that's CAR-T, but we can't do that until they've failed another line of treatment. So we sort of have to give them another line of treatment, which we know isn't going to work very well, only so that they will then be eligible for CAR-T. So it would be wonderful to sort of cut out that second line chemo and go straight for CAR-T. Um, but even for those patients who are autograph fit, um, you know, the, the, the data from Zuma 7 suggests that actually the event-free survival is uh, strikingly positive uh, if you compare second-line CAR-T with a chemo versus autograft approach. And although the overall survival curves didn't quite reach significance, they were very nearly there. So, you know, if I had relapsed a few stars, I, I would be wanting CAR-T as second line. Now, this is going through nice as we speak. Um, so we will hear hopefully towards the end of the year, maybe early next year, about whether that approach will be reimbursed. So I think that's the main way that our pathway for diffuse large B may be affected in the relapse space. And then again, we'll be eagerly awaiting what NICE makes of um, polatizumab R chip uh, to see if we will be able to use that and in what patients. Will they restrict it to higher IPI subgroups or uh, all comers based on the trial eligibility criteria? And then the other sort of rapidly changing area, which I think will uh, um, be affected in the UK quite soon is, is relapsed follicular lymphoma. So at the moment, the follicular lymphoma pathway is relatively standardized. It's R chemo first line, R chemo second line, although sometimes R squared, so rituximab and lenalidomide. Third line, if you haven't had R squared, that's where you would use it. But then fourth line, there's sort of nothing. And you know, these, these are patients who are not curative. So we need things for subsequent lines of treatment. Uh, and we have two very exciting new agents. We have, again, CAR-T, um, and that's going to go through NICE for fourth line treatment. Uh, um, uh, and yeah, so it would be great if we could have a, a more standard of care, effective approach for fourth line patients. Uh, and then the other exciting uh, uh, agents are bispecific antibodies. And mosinotizumab is the one that's sort of ahead of the game in terms of timelines. Uh, and that will be, uh, we hope, nice assessed uh, quite soon as well. So I think how we might, how that might change the landscape is it'll still be our chemo front line. It may be our chemo or our squared second line, but then hopefully we'll be able to use bispecifics and then hopefully we'll be able to use CAR T cells. And that's a radical change of the follicular lymphoma pathway.